Luke talking about Sam Smith is a disgrace. Yeah. And give it my honest appraisal because I think it's worth it. Uh, in the context of you know, anti-bullying, I suppose. Good morning. Good but it's important to note that he's deleted this now. But that heavy political lean, that heavy political lean from the early stages of his content, heavily politically leans with people like Peter Folding, doesn't it? The right wing, those that want to privatise the NHS, all that sort of stuff. That's all the right wing as well. Like There's overlaps and lots of different things. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's jump in. Afternoon, good evening everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Now, I'm coming on here today because I am kind of at the end of my tether with the likes of Sam Smith. And that brings me to Sam Smith, who I find a very disturbing person. I mean, he's both disturbed and disturbing. And every concert now seems a desperate cry for help by this guy. Here's just a little bit of where Sam Smith is now in his career and his performance art. <laughs> Oh my god, a pop star is doing slightly lurid things. Oh my god. A pop star, I mean, stop me before I start going on about how the mainstream agenda to sexualize the youth through pop music could be considered to be a legitimate grievance. But picking on Sam Smith specifically because he's homosexual is actually, and I'll state this outright right early on, Outright, right early on, just to make it easy for everyone. Um, gays are um, pedos, conspiracy. <laughs> LGBT grooming conspiracy theory is the notion that LGBT people, or those supportive of their rights, are engaging in child grooming and enabling child sex abuse. <gasps> it's a far right conspiracy theory and an anti-LGBT trope. The claim has been pushed by a growing number of mainstream conservatives, particularly in the United States and the English-speaking world. And that's because those conservatives are the uh, evangelical Christian sort of side of things who think that being gay is something against God. So they've got a lot of money in America and they... Hi, Mink, how are you doing your thing? Um, they've got a lot of money in America and they're doing a lot of, uh, you know, pushing and... Um, what's the word? Lobbying and stuff. And so their politics seep in to our politics in the UK. But as you just saw, Luke was referencing an American piece of media that was dissing uh, Sam Smith. Transgender people in particular have received targeted attacks, alluding to the trope. Um, and basically the concept is, as you see, see there, this conspiracy theory that gay people are gonna be grooming kids and they're all predators and like, you know, gay is bad, etc. cetera. Um, and it's pushed now heavily. You'll notice if you're on Twitter or you follow the media a bit on social media, you'll see a lot of anti-trans agenda. Oh, we can't have them in the toilets. This is a man dressed up as a woman and he's trying to sex up the kids. And okay, there might legitimately be the occasional sex predator getting around some rules with, you know, the current flux in political and social thinking about um, gender equality and rights and things. Okay, there might be, but the right wing make a big, big push of it and put it right up there on the front and everyone's a scary monster so that this is the big agenda so they can push their big agenda and this is where it stems from. And actually in your day-to-day -day life, in the uh, when you go in the toilets at the pub or whatever, you're not actually worrying about people like Sam Smith gaying up your kids. Like that's not really what's going on on a sort of day-to-day -day routine, normal level. Like you, you, in society, you'll be able to pick out strange examples of everything that happened, but it's not like this big, thing that they're trying to push but they will push it and highlight it and push it on the mainstream media and there's a big conversation going on about it so that's how media works that's how the right wing work when they push their agendas in the media and that's where this has come from sam smith maybe plays into it a little with his provocative and uh, interesting stage persona but like hello didn't you, weren't you around when Madonna was doing her thing with the boobies? Or weren't you around when Alice Cooper was doing his thing? Or weren't you around when, I shouldn't say Marilyn Manson because hasn't he had people accuse him of stuff, but you know, aren't you aware of what goes on? Oh, sorry, Minky, I just dropped that by mistake. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so like, aren't you aware of like the pop media? And are you really that shocked that now a man is doing this? Audience, it's a very heavy man with man boobs and nipple covers and like the front of a thong and high boots. In a devil or the type of performance. We've seen this long enough. It's just controversial pop music stuff. It's not really someone trying to gay up the kids, so don't worry. 
So Will, I, I'm not saying it's exa exactly the same as what you were reading inside that classroom, but it just seems like at every turn, we're priming these kids for inappropriate sexuality. You hear that? You hear what? that? Priming the kids, right? So you could you could talk about that if you want to talk about like all the pop music of the last like 30, 40 years. Like you could do that. You could talk about that as a topic, the sexualization of the youth through through mainstream media. You could do that, but that's not what's really happening here. You're using it as a shoehorn to batter LGBTQ people with the idea that they are in some way um, the seed of the devil and are trying to uh, sexualize children for their own gratuitous ends. And it comes from the right-wing evangelical conspiracy ideas. So let's hear Luke defend and project and you know perpetuate those terrible, terrible ideas in 2024. Why we are celebrating and applauding this kind of behaviour, somebody that promotes pornographic performances and is acting in a way that is basically sexualising children. There you go, sexualising children. Didn't take long, did it? I didn't see any children on stage with Sam Smith. Didn't take long, did it? Everyone's gonna have different opinions on this. You can have your different opinions in chat. You can have your different, bearing in mind this is gonna go on YouTube as an upload. You can have your different opinions in the comments, but I've just shown you the, the you know, pull the string. I've shown you where it leads. I've just shown you where the conspiracy theories come from, why they're politically motivated, which side of the political perspective they've come from, and that evangelical Christian basis in it, you know, an idea that gay is bad and God, you know, pray away the gay and all that. You know, I've shown you where it's come from and I think it's tired and backward and it doesn't belong in our mainstream modern society. But I think it's a sort of fascist style idea. And if you're not careful, then uh, we're going to go backwards instead of forwards as a society. And of course, I'm not defending a man that's a sex predator dressed in a dress going in the, the changing rooms. That's not what I'm defending. No. Uh, but that over highlighting and that over pushing of that boogeyman um you don't even know if some of those pictures are real or if they're just people messing about like okay there are real cases but like that boogeyman is not going to be the total undermining of what is a modern progressive society so wind your neck in go back in your little box you know we don't want this bollocks infecting society thanks confusing children and kind of gaslighting them into this is the way it is. Listen, and some kids are gay, yeah? Like some kids, DNA, born gay. And they're going to be confused by the idea that you can't express yourself and that there's nobody out there in the mainstream media that represents any form of expression that they would identify with. Just because you don't identify with it doesn't mean you should ban it, does it? It's a man dressed up provocatively at a pop concert. This is how performances. I know Sam Smith, you know, is routinely doing that and is noted for his provocative and um, interesting fashion choices. But I note that Lady Gaga is not having this same video made about her. Sure, well, maybe we should, you know, maybe we should ban Lady Gaga for trying to sexualize the kids. Again, if you want to talk about the sexualization of children in mainstream media, like that is a totally legitimate conversation to have. But this is not the conversation you're wrapping it up with. I've had enough of it and I absolutely find it disgusting. And at the same time, masculinity is almost being frowned upon these days. Where's uh, masculinity? Your narrow definition of the patriarchal masculinity and the pushing of it and the perception that you have to adhere to it, otherwise you're not in any way masculine or a man, that's wrong. So welcome to 2024. You might want to go and learn something about this. <laughs> Where's masculinity? There's no more tough men. Men need to be tougher again. No more crying. It's time for us to go on the building site and punch each other's faces. Like, what are you talking about? Welcome to 2024. I'm quite happy as a man, not having to prove my masculinity by how much things I can lift or how far I can throw you or something like that. <laughs> although some men that I totally respect, like, you know, those strong men, they still feel that's a big part of their psyche. Let them do it. Like, again, I'm quite open to the idea that people could want to be themselves. So if that's who you want to be and how you want to be it, Luke, then I think you should be free to do that. But I also think that in the same breath, people should also be free to express their masculinity with a little pair of black pants on, little nipple tassels and a sexy dance. 
So you can just get fucked. Masculinity gone. Where's femininity gone? There's nothing wrong with femininity. There's nothing wrong with you women shutting up and getting back in the kitchen and making me a sandwich. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, of course. That's not what Luke said. But are we going to be winding things backwards? Or are we going to continue to go forwards? Because no, there's nothing wrong with femininity. No one said there was anything wrong with femininity, did they? But your perception of what femininity is and ascribing it to the rest of society or nothing else, please thank you, can go in the bin. In fact, some of what Sam Smith was doing seemed relatively feminine to your perception and it was unacceptable to you that a man should do it. So now that's got to go in the bin. Come on, Luke. And there's nothing wrong with masculinity. But I tell you what, I tell you what the mainstream media seem to be doing these days. They seem to be taking someone like Andrew Tate, oh God, and Tristan Tate, oh God, who are inspiring a generation, who are inspiring a generation to get themselves arrested in Romania and have to go to prison for abusive behaviour and coercion of women, forcing them to be cam girls. Because there's nothing wrong with femininity and masculinity. Uh, uh, teaching men to go out and to work hard and to go to the gym and to be top level, to be the best version of themselves they can be. Top G. Well, top F. H. H. I. J, K, L, O, M, N, O, top O. You could top O. P, Q, R, S, top T. Top V. Turn. Andrew Tate said, if you're missing your ex-girlfriend, every time you think of her, do 20 press-ups. Boom. Solved. <laughs> Don't go through any period of int introspection about what went wrong or right in your relationship and uh, maybe take on board some of the things she said, hurtful as they may have been, and try and improve yourself so that the next time you enter into a relationship, you're not as boorish or pig-headed or whatever the fuck it was, um, and you can maybe do a better job and work on your own personality personality i'm not saying how many press-ups you do maybe this is more of a mental press-up but yeah or you could just get bigger and stronger and then lady lady wrong <laughs> these people are the people that are being they're being called misogynists the mainstream uh, media they are misogynists <laughs> they call themselves misogynists <laughs> they proudly wear the badge of misogynist because that's the, the whole dichotomy in the prism that we're doing here, Luke, is it's people who are against misogyny and pro-misogyny. But I don't think you understand it properly. Yeah, is making the likes of Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate seem like they're toxic and they're bad for men and they're bad for women, just basically bad for people in general. But then someone like Sam Smith who can turn up at a concert half naked wearing a thong, nipple tassels and knee-high boots in a kind of uh, devil-worship type performance. There as well, the man is overweight and un. Oh my God, we're fat-shaming Sam Smith. Recently, I had to do a video to carefully explain about how I do not agree with fat shaming because we were talking about Phil's wife. You want to go and if you haven't checked out those videos on this channel, get and check out the Dark Side Phil content. Have a look at he revealed his wife on stream. She changed dramatically. It was a shock. And then I had little further drops to talk about fat shaming. Um, but OK. OK. Knee high boots and being fat. Sam Smith needs to go in the bin. Got it. Got it. Nipple tassels and knee high boots in a kind of. Uh, devil worship type performance there as well the man is overweight and on oh and he supports the devil he, he's devil worshiping as well healthy sorry not the man the they oh they they are extremely unhealthy and overweight and yet this kind of person and their performances are being broadcast and are being applauded now, there are going to be members of this audience who are watching this video who say, yeah, but Sam Smith is bad. He is overweight. He is this and that. He is this and that. I, like, I respect your opinion, but like, again, I don't know if this is actually a, a serious political point that needs to be made, that Sam Smith is living a slightly debauched lifestyle, like being as he's made his way to the top of the pop stardom pile. Uh, wasn't he a part of that pop idol thing with Simon Cowell and all that? I can't remember, but uh, made his way to the top of the pop idol pile and then had some success and now he's 
putting on weight and singing songs and being sexy and sexual. Um, like, like, you really have a legitimate grievance with that. And is it really a massive problem? Like, sorry, I can't keep it. I was trying to seriously take the opposition's argument in my stride there and see if I could empathise with it. But, like, honestly, I think it's fake outrage. It's fake pearl clutching. Because I think those same people would laugh at Gaza with his fake tits out doing his Gaza thing or um, would, like, go to a strip club or something like that. And I think that... Uh, the same people who are fake outraged about, or maybe not, maybe there's a sect, I say sect because it's religious, a group of people who uh, really feel it's it's legitimate outrage. Um, but like, come on, what are we doing here in 2024? What are we doing in 2024? Uh, big ups, Toffee. I saw you stay this earlier. Sam Smith is not someone I want my kids inspired by. Same as I don't want them inspired by the Tate brothers. There's more than two positions to be. Agree. But like, inspiration from Sam Smith is like different from the Tate brothers. The Tate brothers are doing lots of political rhetoric like it's a lot of political rhetoric and it's a lot of um, trying to get into people's minds through the media that they recognise shorts, TikTok, stuff like that, um, promotion, uh, marketing promotion of themselves, all in an aim to get rich, really. Yeah. Um, whereas Sam Smith sings songs and is a pop star. And if you like that, so, like if one of your sons came to you and said, hey, I really enjoy the work of Prince and the new power generation, like Prince and his flouncy clothes and his like guitar. I want to get a guitar like Prince and I want to get, a, you know, a jacket like Prince. You might be like, well, you know, that's not to my taste, but enjoy being you. Um, and if they came to you and said, like, Sam Smith is brilliant. I really like his songs. And, you know, I, I want to get a pair of thigh high boots. Maybe you might, depending on the situation, say, well, maybe don't wear that. Don't wear that to school disco. Um, you know, maybe it's a phase. But if that's really who they are and inside who they are, then what's wrong with that? Like, let them enjoy Sam Smith and, and be who they are. It's music and it's um, dancing and it's costume and it's, okay, a bit of sexuality, but people have sex and they are sexual beings. So if you are attracted to a man and you are a man, then that is okay. Like, and celebrated, well, yeah, like, humanity is celebrated. Not, oh, God, teach all the kids to suck dicks quick. Like, no, just humanity celebrated. And if it's the contentious point that you're making it, uh, for this is for Luke at this point. If it and the the right wing, if they make it into this big sticking point, then on the other side of the coin, people are going to say, right, well, fuck you. Then I'm going to be even more wild. I'm going to take even more clothes off, and you're not going to stop me kissing as many men as I want to because fuck you. Like so, you kind of like create the counterpoint even more hard, like by the counterculture movement that goes against the mainstream boot in their face. Um, and, you know, we've kind of moved past that as well now. So it's not even like, uh, you know, gay pride and stuff like that. Um, it still has a lot of politics involved, doesn't it, in ways? But it's more just a, a social celebration these days and less a sort of statement of our position to exist in society. I say our oh, LGBTQ you know, humans, but, um, I, you know, it's, it's less a, a position of uh, this is our statement, our place in society now, as more of a just like, you know, it used to be we're here, we're queer, get used to it. And now people have got used to it. So the ones that aren't used to it and can't deal with it, it's like, hey, you're living in the past. Shut up. <laughs> like, it, it's less about we're here, we're queer, get used to it. Or it should be, because I feel personally like we have, because I know in my social circles and life situations, if someone were to be a bit Sam Smith or whatever, I'm not going to be like, fuck that one. They can't come out with us. They're not our friend anymore. Like, God, they're a fucking horrible, dirty gay that wants to suck off the kids. Like, that's not happening. Like, that's not happening. Like, I've got loads of friends who are outrageously gay. I love the people that I've met in my life who have been a bit Sam Smith. Like, it's just pathetic to be even poking at him and point, mating him out, making him out to be this folk devil. And the whole thing is that for Sam Smith even, like on this other level, right, he can thrive on that. It's all, it's all attention. It's all entertainment. So if everyone's going to make a big fuss over Sam Smith get, getting dressed up, same as Lady Gaga, that he'll, get, he'll get even more dressed up. He'll do something even more shocking. Alice Cooper did. Ozzy Osbourne did. Marilyn Manson did. These people weren't cross about them. But Sam Smith has got slightly different gender politics or sexuality. Right, well, he, he's got to go. That's too shocking. Um, like, it's pathetic. It's just a non 
conversation uh, started up by political people who are fueled and funded by some quite um, big money in America to pump this stuff out into the social media until it becomes the agenda of people like Luke. And like again, I, I will do it now on Twitter. I'll do it now. I'll go Twitter. I'll go home. We'll see what I get first. Pornography or um, like pornography is bad because it will take me off the internet. There's Phil. Um, when do I get a, a, a transgender person? Because I follow some people who are angry about the trannies uh, because I need to see both sides of the argument. I need to be aware of how much of this is being pumped out. But of course, mine isn't going to be that bad because I get more of this stuff. Hooray. Um, in fact, why am I doing it this way? Why don't I just search for Glinner? <laughs> Graham Linehan. Right, this is the easiest way to do it. You just go to Graham Linehan's profile and you scroll down. And then there's Eddie Izzard. I hate Eddie Izzard. He's bad. And then there is... Uh, that's, they're not trans. No, no politics there. Um, hysterectomy and menopause. Depression after double mastectomy followed by menopause and hysterectomy. Trans joy. There's anti-trans. That's anti it's, it's on social media. It's a big thing. But actually, whilst I completely... Listen, if there's any people out there thinking I'm um, under, uh, undermining that trans issues are important, I'm not. Like, I think people's individual rights and freedoms are important. But I think that how the right wing are portraying it as this huge negative problem that's in our society that we need to focus on and get rid of and it's the big problem in our society that's an absolute naivety total naivety and it points well away from the real problems like uh child poverty like the fact that people haven't got lots of money because the fuel bills and the you know all these problems in our society that are serious and real that are caused by the rich people they're pumping out this shit so that you get distracted and you don't care and you're angry about someone who wanted to change their gender and wanted to celebrate that they are who they are and love who they love. Like, as long as it's not kids, I think we're okay, aren't we? Do you know what I mean? Like, so it seems weird that this becomes the height and... Like, if you're looking at, if you're looking at the world through Graham Linehan's politics on his twitter then we've got a really balanced good society but there's loads of fucking scary men in dresses trying to sex up all the children so we really need to fix that because it's really a major problem we should probably bring in the army <laughs> like, uh, but that's not the reality of the world is it that's not the reality of the world um but if you are naive like luke is or you have an a, a correlating agenda like luke does then you can make it a problem for people and you can gather a band of people around you that think in the same way as you and sort of make life worse for other people that you might call victims of this um, and it might feel a bit like bullying to people who are legitimately growing up with gender dysphoria mightn't it by, um, by a group of people by certain parts of the media but then it takes the certain on the unawoke, the and, uh, unwoke. Listen, uh, before we get into woke, and like you know, I'll show you Kathy Burke one more time, and then we'll just deal with that. Um, the the important thing is, like I agree, like it doesn't have to be your cup of tea. Yeah, Sam Smith doesn't have to be your cup of tea. Um, and most parents would understand at some point their children will like rebellious nature or whatever it is. But they'll enjoy things the parents might think, oh, I don't know about that. What's that now? Um, but ultimately, you yourself were a child once, and you remember growing up and being told not to. Have a, you had to cut your hair or you had to wear the, the uniform or you know you had to do this or you, you couldn't do that and really you remember the fact that you felt like who you were inside and who you were inside was who you wanted to be so being who you are and being who you want to be is fine um big ups my child is gay and trans he wasn't born gay or trans showed no signs um that's bad um Obviously, I'm not going to read it out, but like, you know, that's bad. I'm really sorry about that. Um, yeah, individual cases, individual cases. I don't know. But I do know that the there is DNA evidence for homosexuality. Like, you know, there is a gene. I, I mean, I'd say I do know. I'm not a DNAologist, am I? But like, you know, like, I think it's fair to say that people can, like, whether I know or not, I'll tell you who, I'll tell you who does know about this is the person who, in their mind, wants to make the decision to, to be themselves. Um, and I agree that they could be pushed in different directions by society or things that happen. Um, but again, they're not me. So I don't think I should be able to make up their mind for them from the outside. Um, and this isn't the entire, like this episode now, we're not going to fix the entire issue of gender dysphoria, legitimate pe trans 
gender and other people who are faking it and someone who had a pair of tits put on so they could go in the women's prison. We're not going to fix it all now in this conversation, but I want to make it clear that if we had to spend a day tomorrow, one day tomorrow, fixing all the issues, whilst I really appreciate to some people that is the biggest issue in their life and it needs to be fixed if it's unfixed in society, there are some really big pro and even people with these issues at their in their life would agree um, there are some big priority issues like children in poverty um would, for me is probably a really high up one and i think that some some of the politics around this um distorts how we perceive the issues and so today's stream is not about fixing that as an issue um whilst i think and in the future i think there's loads of content that we could look at and enjoy together um and like, i've watched loads of youtubers talking about these issues so i'd love to talk about them more um, but I'd like to just say, like, I suppose Sam Smith doesn't represent all of these issues either, but it is a STEM conversation from this. Um, and it's this that I've got to really, you know, make sure that I'm critiquing. It's only a 15 minute video and we're only three minutes in. So uh, <laughs> I've got to get on with it. Otherwise, I'll take forever. I will speed him up a bit. People to call this shit out for what it is. And I find it to be, uh, it's, it's virgin on child abuse. Sex. And Sam Smith is a perfect example of just distasteful and let me read something that i've put together so many children go to these concerts these sam smith concerts when he says read something i put together I, I always wonder whether he put it together or someone wrote it for him to say i mean now with all the context that's a legitimate concern isn't it um but maybe he does write this stuff you know in fair play he's a bit of a bit of a wordsmith isn't he like is he and this to me with what he's doing it's a way of sexualizing them and confusing the hell out of them. Now, if this was a self-identifying man or a self-identifying woman, then to stand on stage in a thong or with nipple tassels, so your, bo your boob, your breasts are out, with nipple tassels, that wouldn't be okay. That would not be okay. Uh, yes, it would. It would be seen as disgusting and distasteful. But because Are you fucking nuts? Like, obviously, a woman, it would be different because she'd have actual boobies. So there is that. But are you fucking nuts? Like, He-Man he -Man goes around in less clothes than Sam Smith wears. <laughs> they wear less clothes than Sam Smith when they're swimming at the Olympics. What are you on a pal? I suppose it's all about context. Because Sam Smith is somewhere in between. He's nor here nor there. He's not a man. He's not a woman. He's not a he. He's not a she. Who knows what... It, they is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Come on. Like, we're not bullying people on the internet, are we? We're not writing off whole swathes groups of society. And, like, that comment in itself would not hurt a number of vulnerable people in society, would it? Oh. Like, nice to use your position to do nice things. I'm glad he, I'm glad he deleted this video now that he's changed his mind about bullying people on the internet. We. And you're not attaching yourself to being a male, and you're not attaching yourself to be a female. You're kind of just this entity that's like bumbling through life. And it's seemingly deemed more acceptable. And it's almost, I feel like there's been a loophole found in how to sexualize children, how to confuse and manipulate them. It's like this is the loophole. It is disgusting. And yet, strong, inspired. What are you saying? Are you saying transgenderism or. Being gay is a loophole so that you can sexualize children. Is that what you're saying? Or is it being Sam Smith or pop music? I'm a bit confused. Honestly, I'm a bit confused. But I don't really need clarification because whatever you say is going to be bollocks, isn't it? What are you talking about? Again, I can point you towards the origins of that conspiracy theory if you'd like to learn more. <laughs> people like Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate who... I've got a generation of people to go to the gym and to be the best version of themselves and to work. They're misogynists. They're toxic. But this Sam Smith... No, listen. It's not because they go to the gym that they're misogynists. <laughs> How can you mischaracterise something so clearly? Like, you can't have an argument or a debate with Luke because he's not even talking about what he's... He's like, because they go to the gym or because they tell you to, to, to work hard, they're now a misogynist. Well, no. It's the other stuff they said, the misogynistic stuff. That's the problem. Like, you've got to actually attack the actual argument, Luke. You can't just dance around things and pretend that you didn't hear it. Oh, it's, it's, 
he's expressing himself. I hope Luke never watched a Queen video. Thank you, Rain Gods. I mean, do you see how fucking... I, I would I would put it on and we dance around to it, but I can't because uh, uh, copyright. But, like, I do just want to break free. I want to break free. I want to break free from the chain just so self-satisfied. I don't need you. Like, you know, hello. <laughs> I just, I'm going to sound like an old person, like an old man shouting at a cloud now, but I feel like the youth of today <laughs> have not seen enough culture, <laughs> have not lived through enough stuff and have maybe just been born into the world that was created from all of that, like, conversation, battle, um, you know, human rights, expression. Like, just, it's like... It almost feels so ungrateful for somebody in Luke's position of total freedom to want to do or whatever they want in their life and to be whoever they want. You are totally free. In Western society, okay, you might be born underprivileged. Okay, you might be born into poverty in our society at the moment, which is terrible. But you can still get a free education, free healthcare at the point of contact. You can still choose to pursue any path that you want to take. And if you get a, a loan and can pay it off after, you can still go to university. Like the world is your oyster. We live in Western luxury. Uh, I, again, I'm thinking of kids in poverty every time I say this, because I know that not everyone lives in proper luxury. But if you've got heating, if you've got, uh, you know, windows on your house, if you've got running water, uh, like you're doing a million, like you're, you're in the night top 10 five percent out of everyone in the world because there are loads of people that don't even have all that so um i'd want our kids to grow up like with more than that you know like there shouldn't be a family where parents choose to feed their children or to skip a meal themselves or whatever that shouldn't be happening you know uh, mold on walls in council properties and things needs to be completely fixed like this cannot be continuing Poverty is the hugest, biggest problem on our agenda in our country, politically, in my opinion. However, like we talk about this, don't we? Um, but yeah, to be in this position of, of privilege and to look around and say, there's somebody else that I don't want them to be them. Fuck them. I'd, I'd like to see Luke give this speech in Soho or like up on stage at Live Aid following Eddie Mercury's performance or something. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to... I, I just like... This context in your conservatory with the towels up is one thing. But, you know, do this speech in cosmopolitan cities around the world. Go, go and do it in non-cosmopolitan cities. Like, go and do it in the, uh, <laughs> the Islamic uh, Republic of Daesh or whatever. They'll probably agree with you. But don't do it in... And that's not a diss at Islam. I mean, that's a diss at fascism. You know, go and do it in Nazi Germany back then. They'd have, you know, they would have agreed with you. Although I I heard the Nazis like a bit of suspenders and stockings, don't they? Um, but anyway, like, but do it round here in 2024. You know, even do it at the fucking blues where I go to watch the football. Like, they're not going to agree with you. They're going to go, oh, get off with that rubbish. Let people be gay. We don't care. Fuck you. Like, you know, we've had enough of it, Luke. Like, you've had enough of Sam Smith. We've had enough of your bullshit, which is why in today's day and age, no one tolerates your bullshit. <laughs> and it's only this, like, meh, 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 that comes up when someone like Sam Smith makes it really big and you're bitter. That, like, you know, maybe you're just bitter that Sam Smith is rich and fabulous and entertaining and you're just fucking nothing on YouTube. It's a performance. It's art. Bullshit. It's absolutely disgusting. Yeah, it's like, like I said, people will say Sam Smith just expressing who they are. But if anyone has a problem with it, then the whole gay card's pulled out, the whole LGBTQ card is pulled out, the they, them, non-binary card's pulled out. I'm no, I'm not pulling out a sort of special gay card. I'm saying you've got a problem with him being who he is. So I should have to defend your problem with him? No, you should have to fuck off. Like, your problem with him is irrelevant. Like, he can be himself. I'll stand up. If we're in the school, right, this, let's take this down to basic principles. We're in school. Sam Smith's coming to school in his gay clothes. And Luke's saying, this fucking gay kid can't be in our school. Get him out. And I've said, Luke, I'm not pulling a gay card here. I'm pulling a human card. He can be who he wants to be and you can shut the fuck up. If you've got the problem, you can get out. Like, Luke's the bully. Like, this is bullying. And he deleted it before he did his big episode about bullying, didn't he? whatever card that you've got next it's not a protective like political card everyone should be afforded those same human rights everyone even you with your horrible opinion 
I, I'm not saying you shouldn't be on YouTube saying this. I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying you need. I'm telling you to fuck. You know, I'm saying fuck off and stuff. But like, you know, I'm not telling you have to get in the bin. Really, like people are free to speak. I, as Voltaire said, uh, I might not enjoy what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. So, like, it's sad, but we have to listen to you as well, unfortunately. Uh, but with that privilege, Luke, you should afford that to other people as well. To throw at us. It's like this grey area of non-binary and they, them and who are they? Are they a man or are they a woman? Has made it okay to showcase such performances. What are you talking about? The Romans were having sex with young boys in the bathhouses, you know? <laughs> uh, as a random example <laughs> of uh, homosexuality through the ages. Um, but like, do you think there wasn't freedom like people weren't expressing themselves before the concept of transgenderism was pushed hard on the the media like and isn't it it hasn't it been consistent throughout history that there have been you know people like although it might not have been historically the norm for people to have been out in public in different ways like in other social settings it has been you know the context in history it has like luke knows nothing about the history of homosexuality or like whether in current political climes because we're now more accepting and um, understanding and coming to terms with and thinking through certain aspects of gender dysphoria uh, <laughs> in the past that's never been thought about talked about talk, uh, like now it's like a watershed moment sam smith done his dance the kids are going to be gay like what's going up what would he do if his daughter grew up to be a they or to just be whoever they are like we all are they's really aren't we in some ways we're all just they thems like until we delineate in some way i suppose um you, also i'll tell you what uh going into a complex discussion about identity and what makes you you is a very difficult conversation because every time you state something i can strip it back what makes me me well you are i am a man like what does that mean well it means i've got a penis <laughs> like, and we get into all those conversations they're difficult but what, what even about like uh what about what makes me me i like Birmingham City Football Club well that's just an allegiance I have to a football club that I have tattooed on my body um, but is it really me and my identity and who I am like if you took it away and that the club went away and it never existed could I still be me well I think I could like so like what parts of me make me which part of me is in my soul and who I am to me true to my core um it's a very interesting con and, and you you know and everyone identity is a very interesting conversation and it's a very interesting conversation to be had with Steve and sociology and psychology and stuff, but not with Luke. <laughs> but if you look close, if you look really, really close, it's a biological man dressed as a slutty woman, virtually naked, performing in front of our children. I'm like, oh, performing in front of our children. What do you mean? Like on the telly? Or do you mean that people took their children to go and see him at the concert? Because if they took the children to go and see him at the concert, that is pretty much on the parents. <laughs> Put Ariana Grande on a stage, right? Who yeah, um, a very attractive young lady. Yes. Loads of kids go and watch her shows. Put Ariana Grande on a stage. But you could argue that she was quite sexualized in some of her content. And the fact that she looks quite young and quite sexual and a lot of kids watch her is like exactly the sort of argument that you're throwing at Sam Smith. So I'm gonna say, whatever you're about to say, you're gonna throw the same amount of shade at Ariana Grande because she's equally as complicit in the sexualization of children, right? She was, even, like, she was even on like Nickelodeon or Disney Club or something, wasn't she? Like there was even that whole thing about the um, producer. I don't know. Luke probably doesn't know this, but the producer of Nickelodeon being a big sex pest and like you know making her do things on the show for his own sexual gratification. Um, so you know you've got all those sort of overtones and undertones. Are you going to say that she's bad because she's sourcing up the children, or what? What's happening now? Just a fong and nipple tassels in front of loads of kids, and I bet there would be outcry. What? Hang on. Maybe she hasn't done the nipple thong and the tassels, but. Um, Ariana Grand um, Saucy Hot. I'm just going to write that. Like, is she not? Like, see, some of these are coming up, like, you know, blocked. I don't think she's as sexualized as some of the other pop stars. You know, I don't think she's as heavily sexualized. But, like, surely, like, you know, her stage show, her, you know, her, her attire 
and all this. Like, here she is on her hands and knees in a tiny little skirt. Like, no, is it? Oh, wait, wait, she's got the dress on. It's not nipple tassels. She's fine. Anything further than, than that, it's not fine. The minute you get the, hang on. What about this? Is this fine or not? Where's the line drawn? I need to know because I need to know what I should be outraged about and what I should be supportive of. Like, you fucking idiots. <laughs> Here she is dressed as a bunny girl with the, um, you know, the bunny thing, the bunny ears, is a very, uh, it's like a big theme of hers. It was in one of her songs, wasn't it, the bunny ears? It was like in one of her videos. Hang on. Ariana Grande, um, bunny. Let's just put that. Like, this is a big look for Ariana Grande. And what it is, is, <laughs> right, this is a combination of BDSM attire, BDSM you shouldn't even say that on YouTube. You get done for that, don't you? I should shut up. But we talk too much about sexing up kids now. Like, it's a combination of, like, saucy sex clothes. Like, bring out the gimp. The gimp's asleep. Oh, I like a bit of latex. It's a combination of that. And the bunny ears replicate the chauvinistic uh, um, institution of, or com co company of um, Playboy, where women were treated as objects uh, that traded, like, you know, around and, well, I say traded around, you know, women were treated like objects and created as a commodity, as a commodity. So, like, if you don't think that Ariana Grande is complicit in trying to sexualize the kids, you are, like, that's your argument about Sam Smith, is that he doesn't do this, or sorry, he does do this, and that Ariana Grande doesn't do it. But Ariana Grande does do it, and I also think it's fine. I quite like looking at her dressed up like the bunnies. <laughs> Or maybe I don't think it's fine, because truly in my heart, if I want, don't want to be a pearl-clutching prude. I want to be a free, open society person. But in my heart, I do think that kids are being a bit exposed to sex a bit early, because society has this um, slathering desire to over-sexualise and hype and push and sex sex sells. Um, so I think, and that's probably because of the patriarchal approach to the marketing, and that maybe that changes as society changes. Um, and you see a different attitude to sexuality than this is Ariana Grande is classic pin up, uh, patriarchal, um, submissive, subservient little woman, you know, person, isn't she? Um, maybe not in her behavior, but in her look, yeah. Um, whereas someone like uh, Missy Elliott or someone like um, uh, what's her name? Uh, who are the who are the big ones at the moment? Who are the big ones at the moment? You know, the big the new big ladies, they're quite. Uh, uh, cut him a stack as a cut him a banker up, make up a stack. Um, call him a banker, make it a stack. What is that from? Call it a banker up, make it a stack. Uh, I've got the who is it? It's a rapper. Um, she's a rapper, like Doja Cat, like one of Doja Cat's contemporaries. Um, like Doja Cat's a good example anyway. Like let's get Doja Cat up. Like like Doja Cat plays with that whole like similar to Lady Gaga, you know, saying this is what you want to put up there as a pop star. This is what you want to say is like the beauty aesthetic and the um you know the this is what the patriarchy wants and I have it. But I also do this. <laughs> and like, you know, like she's a bit like that, isn't she? Um, Cardi B, good a good shout. Uh, Lizzo's not the one I'm thinking of. Um, Lizzo, I don't like because she's put spaz in one of her fucking lyrics and didn't realise it was bad, which I can't understand. Um, but I don't listen to her music or anything. But uh, if you like Lizzo, fair enough. Meg The Stallion's another good example. Who's who is the is it Cardi B? Who's the one that did Lady Diana? Who did that, Lady Diana? Nicki Minaj. There you go. Ice Spice and Nicki Minaj. Like, I would just counter, I would just simply counter, it's, it's like a game of cards this is. I will counter Luke's hand of, uh, you know, Luke's put down on the table, um, Sam Smith is sexualizing the kids and this is bad noise. I will counter his entire argument with Ice Spice and Nicki get me copyright and that much might get me copyright and I'll have to mute it afterwards. But, you know, I'll counter, you, uh, you know, I'll, I'll see your Sam Smith, and I'll raise you, I Spice and Nicki Minaj. Now go and get fucked.
Granted, I'm sure there's a lot of adults that would like that, but these shows are not exclusively 18 plus. These shows, a lot of the crowd, a lot of the audience is children. Have you ever seen Ariana Grande with a Yeah, big ups if you don't like Lizzo, just shouting her name out. Fair enough. She might be really good. It might have been that one slip with the spaz lyric, but I was just like, the only the first time I heard of her was that she put spaz in a lyric, and I'm like, how did you not see that was bad? But like, maybe she wrote it when she was younger. I don't know. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. And they're standing on the shoulders of giants, aren't they? Because you've got like MC Light, Lauren Hill, um, you know, there are loads of powerful women in the music industry that don't have to take their clothes off, but if they want to uh, express their sexuality and, like, you know, enjoy it, then they can. Like, it's just fucking ridiculous. Like, welcome to the music industry. Welcome to 2024. And I know that, okay, you could also say Brian Harvey and, you know, there's another side of it where maybe there are some people being sort of pushed around and maybe we are over sexualizing the youth through exposure to the music industry but then that is also part of society and the parents to decide which music artists they expose their children to and how um because music artists that are adults gone do shit so like get used to it or just fuck off <laughs> like do you want to go and are we are we saying that now what are we moving towards instead what, what's the other end of the scale then are we going to have some sort of regulation on the music industry and who can and can't get undressed and what they can and can't wear like, where are we going with this? Should we not just have the women wear burqas then? And again, Islamic thing, I'm not dissing Islam. Like, some people might argue that that's a good thing because then you can't judge the women on how they look. You're forced to just interact with their personality, you stupid people. But it's, you know, what am I saying? What am I saying? What are you saying? I don't know. I just think that this is bad. <laughs> uh, breasts out with nipple tassels on in only a thong. No, I've not. But because Sam Smith's not here nor there, it's fine. It's cool, no problem. His performance, his expression, his identity, bollocks. If Sam Smith shows were, were just for 18 plus, no one would give a hoot, but they're not. Imagine Justin Bieber just wearing boxers and only boxers. Do you think a show should be limited to 18 plus because an artist is going to maybe be sexual on their performance on stage? But one of these shows is going to be at like a late night music event venue. And whilst 18 plus might be on the ticket, it might be the duty of the parents to decide if they're going to take their children to said event like the children are not just going to be going on their own are they school trip we're all going to sam smith concert we didn't realize there was going to be sexual themes whoops like what are you doing right dancing around the stage take that in 30 years ago wearing pvc pants take that 30 years ago had their asses mopped on their first music video they were naked entirely all food and wet and messy which is like a sexual fetish to some people, and they had their asses mopped, didn't they? Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Like... In a kind of sexual manner, in a, um, a sexually suggestive kind of way. Would that be okay? That wouldn't be okay. That would be called out. A minority of people are calling out Sam Smith. I am one of them. Uh, I just think that it's like this grey area has almost um, unlocked the, 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 the space of where this is acceptable. And this will be pounced upon by predators. Sick of it. It seems like it's a pass. Not a man, not a woman. Not a he, not a she. I'm a they, I'm a them. I don't even know. There's, there's that many now. I don't and even... to say that it will be pounced upon by predators is exactly to say that this conspiracy of the right wing, that there are people that are going to try and just use this politics so that they can do sex offences. Well, sex offenders gone sex offend. They were going to do it anyway. Now they're doing it in a dress. Like, it's not because transgenderism needs to be banned. It's because sex offending is wrong. <laughs> like, are you are you catching up? <laughs> Get it. But it seems like by being in this non in this kind of non category, where well, are they a man or are they a woman? You don't really know what they are. So it's like anything that they do is okay because they're not a man or a woman. It's almost like a box has been created where you don't have to take responsibility for your actions because you're not a man or a woman. What? I, I hope that makes sense. It doesn't. It's almost like an inanimate object. So no responsibility can kind of fall on you. You're not a, you're not a man parading your... So now we've got actual philosophical ideas from Luke, which is that if you don't identify as one of the clearly identified genders and also he's about to say display said socially acceptable displays of gender then you are an inanimate object i mean they are un, un, unaware that the patriarchy objectifies women and puts them in that exact position out of inanimate objects they weren't even allowed to fucking vote <laughs> um 
But yeah, we're going to say that if you choose to identify not as male nor female, which is a very small number of people in our society, but agreed, it is a number of people, um, that number of people gain some sort of social immunity to critique because they are inanimate objects and not humans engaging with society anymore. And that affords them a sort of social shield. And what they do with that is they sex up the kids. And we can't even do anything about it because <laughs> they've got a social shield. I don't think so. <laughs> That's the funniest one yet. I don't think so, though. <laughs> Nail uh, body parts in front of loads of children. You're not a woman parading your female body parts, both virtually naked in front of children. You're this in-between, nor here nor there. So it's like you can get away with it. That's what I consider a gateway to child abuse. What are you saying? You're saying because Sam Smith doesn't identify necessarily as male, he can parade his cock in front of children because it's not a man's cock. But that's not acceptable and that's not what happens and that's not what's happening. And he's doing his nipples out, nipple tassels, and you're saying he biologically identifies as a man, but because he... And I don't know what Sam Smith's gender politics personally are about himself i don't know but you're saying that because he identifies as pronouns they them non-gender specific pronoun then his boobs are not man boobs therefore acceptable in society because andrew tate has got his fucking shirt off mate i, I hate to break it to you luke but your your big friend andrew tate if I just search for him like that and put images, it's going to bring up and look there straight away. He's got his, he hasn't even got tassels on them. Uh, he hasn't even got tassels. It's worse than, than uh, Sam Smith. He's not even got tassels. Yeah. So, but because they're man boobs, they, they can be shown in public, of course, because they're male boobs. But because Sam Smith won't identify personally the, to him, his own personal gender politics uh, or, or not politics or whatever, you know, his own, personal gender for uh, affirmation he won't state that they're male you yourself have a problem with them because they could be female boobs and if they were female boobs then it's problematic because they should have more than tassels huh got him we've got that sam smith now lock him up throw away the key got him we've got him it's a mass child confusion and sexualization some of these kids are going to be growing up when they're older like they don't know whether they're whether they're gay or they're straight. They don't know whether they're a boy or a girl. Do you have that problem, Luke? Because you grew up in a similar environment with different sorts of sexual iconography on the television. Boy George existed. Did that confuse you? Like most teens will go through a period of sexual confusion as they enter into puberty. That's fine. That's normal, actually. And there's a certain percentage of people who don't develop as like full homosexual as they grow up that have some sort of homosexual encounter as well. I've kissed a man and I liked it. But for Luke, this probably didn't happen then, because he's saying the kids are going to have it, but he didn't have it. Uh, but despite living in a very similar society. So I'm confused as to how Luke understands this through his own prism. Is he admitting to me that he's had problems with his own sense of gender because he grew up in a world where the Pet Shop Boys existed alongside um, RuPaul? Or is he saying that it's today's society that's going to do this to kids uh, because Sam Smith is so bad? I'm just quite confused. They don't know whether they like this or they like that. They don't know what to feel. They don't like, know what's right. I'm confused, but not about my sexuality. That seems to, to me come naturally from within. And like my expression of myself, and this is what I feel about people who uh, feel they can't express themselves because society won't let them that they're sort of forced to shut down and fit into, you You make them go to the gym and do this and do that and fit into it all, and they don't feel they fit in, and then they've got problems expressing themselves because they've been taught not to express themselves. So I think that's bad, but uh, I think it kind of comes naturally from within. I think we should just celebrate it, and I think it's okay. So I think you need to calm down. Obviously, of course, however you however you naturally feel is what's right. But let oh, these... however you naturally feel is right is right. Okay, I need to stop pausing this because we're only halfway through and I need to get through it. Now. Let our children grow up. Without sexualization, without this, these disgusting shows by these nor here nor there people that are basically performing like sex shows. I've heard about drag artists going into schools doing performances. 
Where have you heard about that? Oh, the right-wing media that are trying to pump this fucking agenda down your throat that there's this terrible sex crime happening under your nose that all the kids are going to be sexed up by the drag queens. But it doesn't matter if once a drag queen occasionally goes to a school. Like, if you remember school, you would have seen all sorts of different guests and people come to your school and do a bit of an assembly. And being exposed to lots of different people from society through the uh, self and waking, you know, safe and welcoming setup of your school having had them being vetted by the school is probably not a bad thing actually and if you think that there's a problem with someone that the school has brought as a guest as a parent you should probably go and talk to the school and the school board about it but it seems to me like a drag artist reading a book to kids is okay even if that book even lo and behold christ almighty um should include themes about different genders <laughs> Like, okay, we're not doing sex education with these kids at this age, are we? Well, actually, if you remember from school, you did some sex education when you were in primary school. They did teach you about mummy and daddy and the birds and the bees when you were at primary school. They did. So, like, you know, just deal with it. In fact, it's probably better that children should learn about different aspects of sexuality. Not just, you know, every day battered onto them when they're kids, but at some point during their education in the safety of the education facility with the ability to ask questions and and all sorts it, it should be that because then they when they encounter it later in life they have some perception and, and basis for it otherwise if you're going to remove all aspects of this from the conversation they're going to grow up be schooled walk into society and go oh, oh my god what is this i do not understand or i've always had these urges and they've been beat down in me <laughs> uh, like it's just bizarre to think that we shouldn't expose children to a drag queen reading a book <laughs> <laughs> now again take a male stripper take him into a school whoa that would that's that not the same not go down. take a female stripper into a school that would not go down take a drag artist in school a drag artist is not a stripper and they're not stripping mm. and if they did then we would probably say well this is a little bit over the line we'll all agree so now you've set up a straw man again like a fake argument that's not happening there are no strippers demanding that they should be going into school to gay up the kids but if that happened, we'd all agree it was bad. So now we all agree with you, do we? No. <laughs> you just are confused about what is socially acceptable. And when you veer into something that is socially unacceptable to everyone, we all agree. Got it. And a grey area. They're getting away with it because they're not here nor there. And it's like they don't have to take responsibility. And I just, I can, I'm kind of seeing through this shit now. Let children grow up. Let children grow up and play and be away from all this crap. Yeah. Uh, okay, but also educate them, yeah? Because, like, school's not just about going for playtime all day, is it? Like, you do literally do biology, like, you do literally do sex education in school. It is actually okay to do that. <laughs> Firstly, Sam Smith shouldn't be allowed to do the, 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 these kind of performances in front of children. You've Secondly, said that a million parents, times now. What are you doing taking your kids to these shows? It's your responsibility. It's your fault. If you're taking them there and you know what Sam Smith does, it's your fault. Kids don't have a choice, really. They don't really know what they're being subjected to. It's all subconscious, but it'll all filter inside their mind. So and now it's the kids are being gayed by the parents. Got it. And it will, it will ingest. And they're going to grow up messed up. What about my friends who have got gay parents? Like, do you think I need to worry about them? Because now they're grown-ups and they're fine. But what about my friends who have got gay parents? I actually know some people who are gay who've got younger children that haven't grown up fully, do I need to go around their house and have them taken off them? <laughs> like, where are we going with this? Big time. Sam Smith's just done this little Teletubbies clip, and he's got, like, these boots on. These I don't know if they're heels or boots. I'm going to try and find the video. And he, he's got short, short... Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Jean-Paul Gaultier, that he's wearing a very Jean-Paul Gaultier-inspired sort of top, the shorts and the boots. It's a very Jean-Paul Gaultier look. Um, don't even tell Luke about Jean-Paul Gaultier. He would be really cross, okay? He would be really cross. Shorts on, really tight shorts. But I'm assuming this is copyright music as well. Shorts and a t-shirt on with a child on it. So there you go. Look, whoa, Sam Smith, disgustingly gay. Disgustingly gay. <laughs> what are you saying? Like, I used to work with people who come to work dressed like that. Like, you can get fucked. <laughs> I've been a hairdresser, like, just what are you talking about? <laughs> My boss used to dress like that sometimes. Like, not all times, like, 
quite often he'd just wear like, you know, a normal pair of jeans and a very, very snazzy pair. You wouldn't catch him without a snazzy pair of shoes, I tell you. My old friend Isaac. I don't think I've ever seen him in a pair of shoes that I wouldn't say, hey, they're good shoes. You know, he had good taste for shoes. But he doesn't always have to wear the shorty shorts and the big boots. He can just wear a pair of jeans and, you know, a normal T-shirt. But like, if he chose to come into work like this, I would equally have gone, wow, you look awesome. Whose hair are we doing today? Or are we just going down the disco? Like, what's going on here? Hello. I remember this TV show coming out when I was watching. They're trying to gay up the kids with the Teletubbies. La La had a handbag. Six years old. Or was it Poe had a handbag? One of them had a handbag. Most innocent, young, just a proper, corny kids TV show. And this person, Sam Smith, is absolutely dying for attention and he wants it that much and at all cost come on pot kettle black here <laughs> pot kettle i mean what do you want from youtube luke money power position status attention what is it <laughs> oh you're going a fucking weird way about it as far as i'm concerned that he is comfortable with sexualizing. This was below, after my time, but they produced this in my area. One of my mates worked on the show, and he also worked on um, uh, in the Night Garden, where he was in charge of the trousers for one of the characters or some shit. A children's TV show, and he's getting away with it, and he's hiding under the ruse of a non-binary musical artist to do whatever the hell he wants. And I, for one, I'm absolutely sick of it. I'm, I, for one, I'm absolutely sick of it. Well, you know, I believe there's a spare seat in the corner of the local boozer uh, where you can go and sit next to the gambling machine and complain about it. But otherwise, no one give two fucks, Luke. <laughs> it's not just a normal dance. It's not young and innocent and playful. It's Sam Smith, who's got this horrible reputation now for doing what he does. You can see right through it. It's just disgraceful. I've got a child and I'm so fucking... She needs protecting. All our kids need protecting from this. It's vile. Let them grow up. Let them grow up about any of this crap. This is why I keep my keep keep your kids away from TikTok. It's a it's a cesspit. That's why I keep mine away from TikTok. She ain't having it. I will agree with that. Uh, you know, I will agree with that. I mean, I don't go on TikTok much, but Alan Vinnie comes on there, so you know, I will agree with that. Let them grow up. Let them find their own way in terms of this kind of LG. Well, also mentor them and expose them to all sorts of different aspects of society, educate them, make sure they've got a strong platform of confidence, security, with which to go into the world and express themselves and be who they want to be. Be there for them, support them in their ventures. Don't always be there to critique and, you know, but uh, give them good advice where needed, but be aware that we don't all want to hear our parents telling us what to do. So allow them to fail sometimes too, but be there to help them pick up the pieces when they do. You know, I don't know. These are just ideas from me. I don't have a kid, but I wish I did. Uh, maybe one day in the near future, I'll find someone who's smart enough to look after a child with me, but stupid enough to let me get them pregnant. <laughs> BT, they, them, non-binary, sexual, gay, straight, LBGT, whatever. Let them grow up to, to work this out for themselves. Right now, they're being fed. They're being fed this crap. They've been fed this bullshit and it's confusing them. Piss off with this. Seriously. Go to a gay bar and put your show on. Go to the. Oh my God. Is this what you wrote in your little thing? Are we still on your script here or what? Piss off with this. Go to a gay bar. <laughs> Piss off with this. Go to a gay bar. I mean, he probably took this down because it. Could have like he's took this video down now, but legitimately, could that statement there not be maybe considered to be um, like homophobia, uh, you know, attacking a minority group um, through the prism of your opinion on Sam Smith? Like that's a little bit worrisome, and it's confusing them. Piss off with this, seriously. Go to a gay bar and put your show on. Go to the Q bar in Manchester and go and put this show on. They'll love it. Keep it out of our children's concerts. But also, parents, stop taking your kids. It's like the mainstream media, it's like they want people to grow up. Kind of in between the genders, kind of flirt in between both. Is that what you think the mainstream media... Do you think the mainstream media are trying to make kids grow up non-binary? <laughs> 
by putting on like EastEnders and the six o'clock news. Did you ever watch that? The Chase with um. My nan used to like that. The Chase with what's his name? What's his name? The presenter of The Chase. You know, did you ever watch that? He's trying to fucking gay you up. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. He's trying to gay you off. <laughs> I wouldn't care as well. Like, if everyone was like, you know, we've all decided to be gay, I'd be like, all right then, fuck it. Like, <laughs> Bradley Walsh, yeah, Bradley Walsh. Thank you in chat. Bradley Walsh. Bradley Walsh, he'd come in for you trying to gay up your kids. He's in the mainstream. I just <laughs> Lieben Licht, Lieben Lassen, as one of my friends once said. Live and let live, Luke. Live and let live. I will continue to critique you on the internet as long as you pump out garbage. But as far as people's right to be themselves, bullying, trolling, I'm not doing that. Be yourself. If you turn out to be an arsehole, I'll call it out. <laughs> like they want people to grow up weak. And not, they want the men not to be masculine. I don't think it's necessarily about defeminizing the women. I think it's about demasculating the men. Because demasculated men means weak men, means more controllable men. But I could counter that and say that men who are confused by their perceptions of masculinity, who feel an uh, urge and desire to be the biggest, strongest one, or like fall into line with the biggest, strongest one, behind the biggest, strongest one, uh, they're also quite easy to manipulate as well, aren't they? I think that maybe a free ex freedom to express yourself makes it harder for you to be manipulated, but if you're piped down a narrow pipe and you're not allowed to express yourself, it's harder. Like, for crying out loud, Luke, for crying out loud, this is just, this is terrible. What bring back? No wonder he did the sneaky delete on this one. But he left it up for ages. He left it up after I called it out. You know, he left it up for ages. It's only recently since the bullying thing came up that he's removed this. Oh, the woke people, yeah. Like, we didn't do the woke people, did we? Um, every time I'll do this, because she says it better than me. And I love Kathy Burke. Um, so this just says it, you know. I say about the snowflakes becoming an avalanche and... Like, there's nothing wrong with being a good person and loving thy neighbour. Like, there's nothing wrong with accepting people for who they are and calling out fascism. So, like, the fascists want to say, like, the fascists want to say, right, in America, this started in America, you've got people against us, people on the left wing, they want to share and they want a free society. Right, they're the libtards. They all want to shave their heads and be lesbians and they've all got piercings and shaven heads and they're all lesbians. They're so liberal that they'll just let, like, uh, immigrants come and like move into your house and, and do bad things to you. They're so liberal. You know, you, you paint them out as this stupid bogeyman. And people aren't really like that. Maybe there's one or two examples of very extreme form of stuff. But on the extreme ends of anything, there are people that are a bit extreme. We don't want to be too extreme. But normal people, you know, reasonable people who are quite like, they don't, you don't have to be some super shaven headed, like, uh, Jack booted, non binary, like example of some extreme example. And if you are that, good on you. Fair enough. You know what I mean? But like, you don't have to be that. Most people in, in the normal are not like that, but have reasonable views. Yeah. And that reason, that gets all factored in then. You're all woke. And woke is bad. Like, let's create a word to say what the thing that's threatening to us is. And let's make it a pejorative. Let's make it a negative. Let's put a negative terminology on something that's actually a good thing. And then we've spun it and twisted it in the public mind. Um, welcome to the 2024 media spin, Luke. It's not people trying to make you gay and trying to convince you to suck someone off if you don't want to. What it is is people trying to convince you to hate other people based on just some differences so that you're more easy to manipulate and control. And it's not wokeism. Can I just say, that gets on my fucking nerves. They're calling you woke if you call out bad things basically if you're not racist you're woke if you're not homophobic oh you're woke be woke kids be woke be wide awake yeah be wide a fucking wake and fucking call it out and it's not wokeism right there you go so she says it better than me i like what she says um that's my feelings on that yeah masculinity 
bring back femininity. But when you do have people advocating for masculinity, Jordan Peterson, Andrew Tate, oh God, even Piers Morgan is an Jordan Peterson and Piers Morgan now brilliant, like the four horsemen of the fuck fuckopalypse. <laughs> no, they can all fuck off. Like, Don't start me um, on that. These people, like, I can, I've, I've, you know, the previous. You know, ages ago, I've analysed the Jordan Peterson, torn him a new arsehole. Like, it's too easy. I'm not going to go into it now, okay? It's too easy. I'm not going to go into it now. But huge misogynist and built his career, basically, uh, used to be a professor in a university and then got in a load of trouble because he wouldn't use the correct pronouns for somebody that decided they wanted to be they, them. And he had a big row about it, so he lost his job. But while he was studying at the university, his specialist studies, you know, the things he was interested in studies was social behavior manipulation of young men and he wrote his thesis on how the warlords in africa manipulated young men to become child soldiers so he knows a bit about manipulating young men and the motivations young men have and then how to manipulate them and then when he lost his job at the university because of this thing it actually went viral on the internet because someone filmed him arguing with the students outside and he went on the news and talked about it because he was like suddenly this viral professor who wouldn't use the pronouns and he realized that whilst he hadn't got a job <laughs> he suddenly needed to support himself and he suddenly had a presence on the internet so he immediately capitalized on that and really pushed hard with this sort of pseudo intellectual agenda of uh, whatever he's doing and it's basically to manipulate young men to buy his book and to see him as a, a important figure so they'll buy his book and it succeeded in lots of ways and the people that follow him and thought he was doing good things are naive and easy manipulatable and in future we can go into the politics of what he says and break that apart uh, but like the sociology of what he says the psychology of what he says and break that apart uh, but he knows what he's doing and he knows it's flawed logic you know women do have a place in the workplace equal to men and it's not simply that they're not doing a good enough job, so they're not getting paid as much. Like, there are gender inequalities in society still. The patriarchy did exist, and he can fuck off. I mean, Andrew Tate, you know, we got arrested, and there's no charges. There's no evidence. Because these people, the establishments are scared of these kind of people. Jimmy Savile never got arrested. They want rid of them. John Peterson is one of the most clever, smartest people you'll ever listen to in your life. He gets a bad rep. Sam Smith, though, apart from some this of This is the thing, right? When Jordan Peterson's at a certain level of smart, which is smarter than you, and he's able to manipulate you, but he's not at a certain level of smart, like, intellectual, like, you know, overall global conversation smart. He's below that, so he exists on YouTube manipulating people like you. <laughs> like, he's not in the, the next level up, like, and he's not smart enough to, to people like me to have not seen through him. And any good Jermaine... Any, any good Jermaine Greer knowledgeable feminist will rip him to absolute shreds <laughs> i don't know your outlets it's more your obscure media outlets like your talk tv like your uh, gb news they'll call this stuff out but your mainstream media. oh god gb stuff. news puppet of the hard right conservative party manipulating the mainstream from their inception as boris johnson's favorite news story source boris johnson who used to write for the mainstream media himself before he decided to move into uh, formal politics i come on wakey wakey great britain news goes in the bin because it's propaganda wakey wakey <laughs> think about it i don't think get off our screen sam smith anyway i think i might have made my point i think you did i don't think there's any i don't recall any videos of ariana grande semi-naked on a stage with nipples off <sighs> i kind of don't want to be the one to break it to him because he's going to lose his mind over it isn't he like i nearly did when i saw it but aren't there actual videos of like ariana grand Aaron, ari ariana grand not nipple tassels granted but like if you go and watch one of her music videos like um won't they be quite saucy like some of these this one's called positions i don't even like dangerous woman like isn't that the norm in, in pop music like, there's seven rings there she is okay that's a famous one let's have a quick look you let's have a quick look at seven rings it plays after the advert so you know god the adverts uh, we'll have a quick look at this this video this music video it'll get me copyright but what i just want to do is quickly scan through it to see the first you know bit where she's a bit saucy and see like you know if it's saucy so uh here she is they're doing okay that's some other people doing some singing she's in close up there she looks prettiest 
Um, there's the lady. She's sort of like behind some bars or something. Oh, there we go. Someone was sticking their leg up in the air and being a bit saucy. That wasn't her herself. But if you just skim on to 30 seconds in, there she is kneeling down on the counter with basically her buttocks kind of exposed. It's a little dress. It's little. So she's still got the dress on. She's wearing the collar, which is like a subservience thing, isn't it? And the ears again. And like, whilst I'm not averse to this, you know, if I came home from a hard day at sitting on the computer talking shit and my wife had dressed up like Ariana Grande and got on the kitchen table and said, ooh, then I'd be like, oh, hello. <laughs> like, whilst I'm not averse to it as a look, you know, it, it hits the, the right notes in my, uh, <laughs> you know, in my primeval consciousness or whatever. But you can't argue that she's not like a sexualized pop star. <laughs> It's just stupid. And I don't know why you focus on Ariana Grande that much. Like, there must be some pop stars out there that don't take their clothes off often or ever, mustn't there? There must be a few. Like, there must be some. Um, like, you could even be into Christian rock if you want to. But why keep bringing up Ariana Grande? <laughs> She's not a good example of what you're talking about. Hold on. Like I said, that's an 18 plus show. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like that. The other way around, if there was an, if Justin Bieber was on the stage, running around in his boxers, dancing in a sexual way, 18 plus show, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like... Are you fucking stupid? I keep swearing in this one because it's so outrageous, this is. And it's going to get me completely demonetised, all the, the F words, so many times. Um, but Justin Bieber top off live concert topless i'm just gonna put that you know come on oh of course justin bieber is always running around on stage without his shirt on <laughs> it's 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 quite a common thing <laughs> i'm not going to google justin bieber boxer shorts because uh, whilst i appreciate what will come up um I uh, would rather not have my search history and therefore what it suggests to me in the future like change to that level of um, Justin Bieber boxer shorts. But yes, <laughs> maybe Luke needs to or maybe he already has and it's made him furious because it made him... Like, this is something that I actually have to say, right? If you are convinced that this sort of media will turn kids gay, you're angered by it. Is it not your own experience that you have seen a picture of Justin Bieber with his top off, felt sexual urges within your own loins, and thought, wow, this Justin Bieber is making me gay. I'm angry. I don't want to be gay. I want to be a straight man. And Justin Bieber is making me gay. So it's Justin Bieber's fault. I watched Sam Smith the other day, and I didn't feel gay, and I didn't feel sexually attracted to kids. But I watched Sam Smith the other day and it inspired, not in me, but in someone else, inspired feelings of this homosexual urge or attraction to a, a child. You're saying Sam Smith makes people attracted to children, are you, Luke? And that's your problem with him. But to me, when I watch Sam Smith, it doesn't make me attracted to children. I wasn't aware that was a problem. Yeah, but you're saying it's a problem that when people watch Sam Smith, it makes them attracted to children. Which people, Luke? Is it you? <laughs> because I can't speak for other people's experience, so I don't try to, usually, you know? But I can speak for my own experience, so I know what that feels like. I know watching Sam Smith didn't give me an urge or attraction. I know that, yeah? But for Luke, it seems to be quite an important feature that Sam Smith turns you gay, makes you want to go to the kids. And for Luke, that seems to be an important thing. So I'm asking a serious question of Luke, which is when you watch Sam Smith... Do you get strange urges? And if the answer is no, I'm assuming he's going to say no to that. I'm assuming he's not going to say yes. When I watch Sam Smith, it makes me feel... I'm assuming he's going to say no, right? If he were to say no, right, then what's the fucking problem? Because you've just proved that it doesn't make you gay, yeah? But if you're going to say yes, you get strange urges from Sam Smith, then you've got a legitimate grievance that you could say Sam Smith needs to be removed from society because he's turning people gay. Or you might have urges that you're just not allowing to come forward because you've repressed yourself all this time because you're explaining to me how important it is to repress things and to fall into line and be socially ascribed masculinity by muscles and stature and, and this and this and this and that's masculinity. So you seem like you've internalised 
the concepts of the patri patriarchy wanted you to the point where you're now lapdog puppet of the patriarchy and maybe your own true feelings your own actual feelings have been repressed in there some way as well and it's causing this confusion when you're trying to express yourself or when you're having urges maybe it's something to do with that <laughs> what sam smith did. listen i think i've made it clear being gay is fine luke if you want to kiss men no one gonna be upset okay no one gonna be upset not me not you not anyone like no one need to be upset okay no one need to be upset it's going on in our our children's concerts and it needs to stop stop now, stop taking them there stop promoting this kind of shit and sam smith think about what you're doing yeah sam smith peace out to everybody but sam smith <laughs> wait that was one of the best things think i've ever heard it. in my life peace out to everybody except for sam smith what you're doing that was brilliant. This is actually a, a... Maybe it was all just a ruse. Maybe it was all just a joke. Maybe it was all just a joke. Because this is funny. If it was all just a big build-up to this punchline... <laughs> this is funny. Peace out to everybody but Sam Smith. <laughs> wow. So you can see what I'm talking about. The cheeky deleter, the sneaky deleter, deleted this one as well. Um... I'm not a big fan of Luke. I think he's had funny ideas brewing for a while now. And I think that what we're going to see in the coming weeks, whatever he does with his show, whatever he does with his you know, content, it's underpinned by this strange agenda. And this, this particular thing, this politics, the anti-woke, the anti-Sam Smith, the anti-protesters, he did one on, uh, the Andrew Tate, the Tristan Tate, the siding with misogyny, um, all that stuff, uh, that's like a, like that underpins a certain aspect of his desires and the way he's going to manipulate his audience and be who he's going to be, yeah. But he's also had it coming for Super Chuffer as well from months ago. And my politics, you know, who I am, what I speak of, absolutely stands against what he speaks of and is. Like, we are in, in counterpoint there, yeah? So I think he spotted me and heard me talking about things way back because he says it. He, he says it, literally says it. You know, watched Super Chuffer since early, you know, followed him like, since... Like, so he's had his ideas brewing. I've not been aware that there's this... Um, this venomous, like, snake in the water. But someone's been brewing some ideas. Someone's been having some ideas for a while now, haven't they? So I just, I'm aware of what's been going on now. So I, um, he asked my advice on setting up a channel, says Red Fan. I can't remember what episode it was in. I remember he sent a video thing in and I replied to it and said, you should do your own channel or something. Um, I remember, because I remember seeing him in the video like, that he sent. Um, but, you know, it will come to us one day, won't it? But yeah, overall, you've heard everything I've said today in the episode. I've made that very clear. The reason I've done this is because I think that there are some Fisher-Price politics going on against me with him, with Peter Folding, with, a, you know, whoever, whomever. And that's a silly game of pissy politics on the internet. Like, they're, they're going to try and play pissy politics on the internet. Like, they don't like me and they don't like the things I say. So they're going to play pissy politics. I'm above that, but I have to cover this, don't I? So, but I'm not going to be here trying to, like, play pissy politics. I'm going to call it out what I see, and I'm going to carry on with my Super Chuffer channel. Thank you very much. And I don't see why Peter Folding, or indeed Luke, should have such a chip on their fucking shoulder about me ongoing. Like, it's been a while now since Luke first did his call me out on his channel and, like, did this stuff. And, like, not this particular video, but, you know, stuff. It's been a while. So, like, maybe they need to fucking grow up. Uh, but they see it as like a thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm being... Maybe I'm being... Maybe I'm seeing shadows being paranoid. I'll let it go. So yeah, that's it. You know, cut, I'll let it go insofar as... We will cut that there and I will now immediately let it go. <laughs> uh, but I'm aware, you know, it's in the it's in the filing cabinet. You know, I see these uh, these movements. I'll say this for YouTube. You be good, my little Pukos. And if you can't be good, you're naughty. And that's cut for you.